Hi everyone, uh, this is Diego, the lab manager for the ALES laboratory, and this is another video of our series on the GBAF, this global database for biodiversity. Uh, today I want to show you uh, in a specific way on how to calculate the number of occurrences that you're getting out of the data that you're downloading, basically. Uh, so if you are, if this is the first video that you're watching about this, uh, it's probably a good idea for you to visit the Alice Lab uh, YouTube channel and take a look at the other GBIF videos that we have there. Um, but anyways, um, the starting point here is we already downloaded the data out of GBIF and um, my data look like this, okay? So the example that I'm using here is for Katabami. Um, it's an Oxalis corniculata species, very common here in Japan, but um, also uh, present in other um, countries. And this is the data that I have downloaded. You see it's an Excel file. I have about 6,000 uh, data points in here. And I just want to explain a bit about this data and show you some things that we can do with it. So the first thing is um, here on the top, on the first line, uh, we have the different variables that uh, GPIF gives us. So some of them, they don't really make uh, much sense for us. So they're either uh, some kind of identification number within the system, like these three lanes here, or any... Um, and then after that, we have some uh, taxonomic information. So th these are the taxonomic categories that uh, they have available for us. So we have kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, and then infraspecific uh, ranks as well. Um, this is very interesting for us. Um, if you were running a search and you end up with very few uh, data points, for example. So let's say that we use it Oxalis corniculata for the search and we ended up with very few data points. What you can do is you can move to other ranks like the genus and the family and then run the search. So you're going to get more data out of that. Okay, so that's one way. Um, after that, we have still uh, some other uh, taxonomic categories there and then uh, the locality of the samples, okay? So here we have the country, locality, state, and province. And uh, these three lanes are very interesting for us. We are going to use it later. Um, here, um, we have two lanes that are explaining the kind of data we have there. So the occurrence status and the individual counts. Uh, these lanes are not very important for us. You can see that they have either information that don't make much sense for us at the moment, or they have many uh, data points that are actually blank. We don't have the, the, the item there. This one would be an interesting one for us, though. Uh, one of the things that most of the students are doing in this class is to count so the number of, of occurrences that we have. So if we had the numbers here, we could use that. But as, as you can see, most of the data doesn't have that information. So we are going to have to retrieve this information from somewhere else. We are going to come back to this in a few moments. Uh, after that, we have the latitude, longitude information, altitude information as well here, elevation, um, and the date of collection, day, month, and year, okay? Um, so those are the most important lanes that we're going to use. And uh, what I want to show you is how we can use this to count individuals. So the first thing is the premise that we have here is that each line of this is uh, one record and one record can be understood as one individual. Okay, so one line, one individual. Uh, this is particularly um, okay when we are talking about trees, for example. So big plants that uh, are not, they do not have an herbaceous um, habit and uh, they basically are, they don't move around, right? So for those cases, that would work well. Oxalis corniculati, it's a herb. Uh, so the counts here could be actually better translated as counts of populations okay so this would be one population 
another population and so on. But uh, for us, for our analysis here in Alice, we are going to uh, use this as uh, individuals. How can we count this? So first we need some kind of criteria to count. Okay, the criteria can be either the taxonomic level, uh, the distribution, the locality of the record, or the date, okay? I'm gonna use the date as an example. Uh, the way of calculating is the same for everyone, for every uh, variable that you use. Uh, so you can just, if this works for you, you can just uh, readapt the method to your own uh, variables. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this column, the year column, to a new sheet. And I'm gonna sort so I can organize um, the years from the um, older to the newest record, okay? The most recent recent record. Uh, for that, I'm using the column year, this is correct. I'm using the val values from the smallest to the largest. And I'm listing that there are headers, so I don't use, I have a header here, right? So I'm checking this box here. So I press OK, and voila, I have now the list. So like this, I can see that the oldest record is from the uh, 1770. And uh, if I go to the newest one, it's going to be to, um, 2020, right? So 2020, there we go. Very nice. Okay, so the next step is um, I'm gonna again copy this uh, table here. And uh, I'm gonna make a list of all of the years that are listed here. To do that, I just change the title. I'm gonna select the column, go to the data tab, and use this uh, function here, remove duplicates. So I can delete all of the lines that are repeated. Like that, um, I had initially 5,725 uh, items and I deleted the duplicates. They were removed, resulting in 166 unique values. So now you see I have a list of the years here on the C column, okay? So basically what I've created here is uh, I have the total list of individuals. Each one of these are counted as an individual. And this is the list of unique values that I have on the, on the column A. Now, what I want to do is count. So for example, um, if I count the number of lines that I have, the entry uh, 1770, I can have an estimation of individuals, occurrences in that year. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine occurrences, okay? Occurrences. Um, I can do that by hand, but as you can see, it's a lot of data, that's too much. So in order for us to do that, what I'm gonna do is to use this count if function. The count if function uh, is going to ask us for a range and a criteria for the search. Uh, the range is basically the complete list that we have there. So I put here from A2 to A5705. And then I put a comma and uh, the criteria would be this item here. Okay. By doing so, when I press enter, there we go, uh, nine entries as we have counted before. Now, I can do this automatically, and to do so, um, the blue one here, so the, the range, is going to be always the same, so I need to fix that uh, range there. To do that, I just add this um, dollar mark um, be in between the letter and the numbers that we have there. And then I can just select this cell, click on this uh, square that we have here on the bottom right, and then drag it down to our list until we reach the final item, 2020. There you go. And there you go. So we calculated year by year the number of occurrences that we have for um, Katabami uh, here, okay? 
Uh, next, uh, you can make graphs out of this. You can add another column with maybe, I don't know, the temperature in those years, the average temperature, or the average uh, amount of rain. And uh, by having those data there, you can start calculating correlations. Okay, um, so you can do different things out of there, but the first step is basically for you to calculate the occurrences. Okay. Um, I did this using the year, but again, if you go back to sheet number one, I could do that, for example, according to the country, so you can have a count of individuals per country, or within a country, uh, for within a province or a state. Um, if you have more than one, uh, here I have only one species, but if I had more than one species, I could count also, ba also based on the species name. What I have on the K column is not for all data, but I have uh, varieties, so subspecific categories. So I could have used uh, that method to count this as well. But anyways, you can do that in uh, different ways and for different purposes. I hope this helps, uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free. You can either write a comment here or come and visit the Alice Laboratory. Thank you.